Okay, esteemed panelists, will you please introduce yourselves? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jess. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I just finished my PhD in Romance Languages, so that took me six years. And I spent three years living in Michigan, and during that whole time I lived off campus. Hi, everyone. My name is Rehane, and my preferred name is Rehan. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm from Iran. I've been in the U.S. for one year. I graduated from the law school in University of Michigan in May, and I'm going to start the Master of Social Work in fall in the School of Social Work. And currently, I'm working as a law clerk in Washington County Circuit Court, and I'm so happy to be here with you. Hi, everyone. Firstly, I would like to welcome you all to the University of Michigan. So myself, Navya Shri, I'm a third year PhD student at Molecular Cellular and Developmental Biology Department. And um, yeah, I'm an international student and I've, I think I landed to Ann Arbor in 2021. And I'm really loving and I'm enjoying the space around here. And the summers are really nice. I love, enjoy, I love being here and I'm enjoying the uh, vibe over here. And I stay on a uh, on, on, on campus housing, which, which is called as Nathur. It's really great. If anyone is interested, I can like give more details about it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Again, welcome to Michigan. Um, my name is Paloma. I'm a PhD student in anthropology. Um, I've been in this program and in the US for six years now. That's a long time. Um, and Currently, I live in Ypsilanti, but I also spent a um, couple of years living in university housing and also in Ann Arbor. So I, I've been in all possible situations, I think. <laughs> they can answer questions about that too. Okay, um, thank you. Um, so my first question for you is, what do you wish that you knew in your first year here? Yeah, so, um... I'm, I was in the humanities, so all of my classes involved a lot of writing and discussion, and that was basically the core. So it would have been really helpful for me if I'd taken time to ask other students or ask professors, like, what was expected in terms of content of my papers, like, written style, argumentation, how to plan my time, how to make the most of other opportunities on campus, and also what was expected in terms of the discussion style in class, because it was quite different to what I'd experienced before. And like, it's not silly to ask those questions, like it's new for most people. So you should ask, because there's probably a lot of people who are sitting there wondering the same thing. And just in general, I wish I'd keep them kept better track of the opportunities to expand my horizons academically, like identifying conferences I could have gone to sooner, other things on campus where graduate students come together to discuss their work. I think they're things that I wish I'd done in my first year to integrate academically more quickly. So, yeah. So uh, for me, uh, first, I think that I wish I could I could have more uh, information and details about different types of courses that I should take and whom I could contact to learn more about them. Because, for example, I wanted to apply for another program at the law school, and I knew that I needed a high GPA, but I wasn't really sure which courses I should take or which professors I should contact. So, if I had that information, that could be really helpful for me. And the other one is that. Uh, I play piano, and piano is not a, an instrument that you can carry with yourself wherever you go. So I wish I could know more about the music practice rooms on campus, both on Central and North Campus, so I could go there and play piano and enjoy my time doing something different from just studying. So to me, so when I first arrived in Ann Arbor, it was like for the first time I came out of my country to study abroad. And I think it would have been great if I had known like a lot of things because I was very new to a lot of things. Some of the things that uh, I feel like if it would have been better if I had known are like one is in terms of uh, housing. I did not know like there are on-campus housing such as like Northwood or Munger. Um, so I lived somewhere like far because by the time I started looking for housing, 
like most of the apartments were taken there were no spots so i was really living on the uh, uh, bus lane where it was really the, like only one bus was running so i think it would have been nice if i had known about all this when i was like before coming here in my first year and also it would have been nice how to ba- if i had known like how to balance or manage time between like rotations a lot of coursework so it's like very new for me doing like research rotations again a uh, taking a lot of coursework so i it was little difficult for me to manage time in the beginning and the other things was like um yeah having a very good work life balance i did not know how to have a very good work life balance so initially like the first year was little pressureful for me so it would have been nice if i had known all of this and i it would have been ma- made me more relaxed i think now i know how to manage it and now i'm pretty relaxed and now i'm fine it's going smoothly yes um so for me um moving here was a little bit difficult because i was very scared about english um and speaking english not being my um first language and i also was raised in a culture where and all of you come from different countries and different cultures um so sometimes in in our cultures it is valued to be super independent and maybe not rely on other people and not ask many questions and as jess mentioned just ask for help um you're going to face many difficult moments but probably none of them are going to be unique to you um so other people will have things to say um how to help they, they will have things to um help you um so asking for help is valid and is absolutely necessary and it makes other people feel good so it's a win win um professors and staff or other students are always going to be happy to share their knowledge with you it makes them feel valuable it makes them be part feel like they're part of a community um so don't be shy and the most important thing um to me is just once you get here or even before you get here just find allies especially if you're part of a minority or a marginalized group just um find allies and and ask around like who is this who here has this identity i would love to talk to them um just share how you feel with people um that have been through different um similar experiences and yeah like here people are super open and they're always uh happy to help thank you so we just talked about what you wish you knew Year. Now, can you share with us what you wish you had done year? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things is I wish I had gone to events on campus that are geared specifically towards international students because there's Grin, Graduate Rack and International, and there's the International Center, and there are a few other spaces as well that put on events like aimed at international students or other students who are interested in exploring other cultures. And I wish I'd gone because it's really easy to get stuck in your own department and not meet many people outside it. And it can also be good to go to affinity spaces to share your experiences with other people who might be experiencing the same things. And I also wish I'd started doing community service and volunteering sooner because that's a really good way to get off campus and learn more about the city, meet people that you wouldn't normally meet as a student and kind of have a space that isn't so academically focused where you're like seeing different people and learning new things. And like the stakes are lower than your program, so it can help and it can also help you find other interests as well while you're doing that. So they're the two big things I wish I'd done in my first year. And uh, for me, uh, I should say that I wish I could go to the gym uh, more often because actually I really like the central campus recreational building and it, it's really huge and it has everything that you want, pool, you can play basketball, volleyball. I didn't have time to go there, but it's also very well located so you can have access to that building easily. But um, academically, actually, I, I really wanted to be able to gain more practical experiences regarding my studies. For example, there are some clinics offered by the law school and you can register for them as your courses and you can have actual practical experiences while you are studying. So I wish I could have that opportunity more. 
And the other one is that uh, I wish I could choose most of my courses focused on a particular topic. For example, I, I'm really interested in family law and now I'm working in family law division at the court. And uh, I wish I could, you know, choose all of my courses in just two semesters that I had more focus on family law. To me, I feel like I should have been a little more relaxed in my first year. I, it was too overwhelming for me. A lot of things was, um, I mean, I had like my plate really full because I had a lot of things together, but I could have taken it really relaxing and slowly because of which I did not do much self-care uh, and I did not take care of myself. So there was time where I was really sick because including like when I was like far away from all my parents, everyone. So I got like homesick and all that. So I think I shouldn't have um, um, done that. So instead I should have taken it really relaxing, really slow. And then the other thing I think I would have done is I should have done is like to manage my time properly just to do like one at a time, take one step at a time. So where I was just putting like four, five steps at a time. So it would, I think that made it a little more overwhelming and difficult. So I think now I learned it and I, I, now I do that. I, sh I wish I, I would have done all this while I was in my first year. And also I think I should have made more friends. I do have now, but it was like, I was very introvert and I was not talking to a lot of people. So I just came out of my comfort zone now, but it would have been great if I was like making more friends and good connections. And also it would have been nice if I had joined the international student organizations in my first year. So it would have made me feel much more better, meet more people where I would have opened up myself, learned a lot of things. And now I'm a part of it. But anyways, that would have helped me work to just get out of all my stress while I was in um, first year. And other thing is like, so I did not explore much places while I was in my first year. So I think I should have done that. Like Ann Arbor is good. There are a lot of places around in and around Ann Arbor. I think I should have explored more um, so that it would have made me feel better, much more better and like much more safe and a good place. So these were the things that I wish I could have done while I was in my first year. Mm -hmm. I agree with everything you've said, um, <laughs> but I think that my one big mistake when coming here in my first year um, was living far away from campus. I think that living close to campus allows you to participate more in social events or maybe work and, and study with people. Um, just being around others is super helpful. Um, and it's the transportation system can be a little bit difficult here. So you really want to have access to um, campus easily because everything is everything here um, works around the university, around campus. So it's it's not great if you're too far and you cannot be part of, of um, some events just because you are living somewhere else. Um, I also wish I had taken things slowly as someone mentioned already, um, but also I wish I made more mistakes. The first year is meant to be the moment when you make lots of mistakes. And for example, if you choose a research project and then you change your mind when it's okay, like it, that's what that's part of the process of developing your project is choosing the wrong project first. <laughs> so then you can find the right one. Um, so yeah, I, I wish I, I yeah, I, I had taken things less seriously in that moment, um, and also spending more time with other international students. Absolutely. Thank you. Speaking of spending time with international students, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this that this panel is being held in partnership with Grin Graduate Rackham International. And it is a student-run organization in Rackham Graduate School uh, for international students. And I would put they are writing all of the incredibly seamless background support that is making this um, possible today for y'all. And I definitely want to make sure that you know about them um, before we leave. So 
their website in the chat. So now that we just discussed what you wish you had done your first year, would you share with us what are the best things that helped you when you first got here? Yeah, so um, I actually left it really late to find housing and I couldn't really find anything. So I went on the university's off-campus housing site and the only thing I could sort of thought I could pay for with my stipend was renting a bedroom in the home of a retired couple. And I was like, okay, that wasn't what I expected, but I'll do it. And actually it was really helpful having that kind of arrangement because I would come home and they would be watching really random things on the TV or they would be baking. And it was just a total break from campus. And because like their family would come and visit from different states and they went to church and a lot of people from church would come around. I actually met a lot of people in the community really easily and it was all like just there where I was living so I didn't necessarily have to go out to have that kind of interaction so that was a really good way like to arrive in the U.S. and also like learn more about the city but I didn't really plan that but if you haven't found somewhere to live yet you know there's always options and sometimes something you're a bit nervous about might actually be a really good thing and the other thing that really helped me was I was on fellowship in my first year. So um, that meant I could still work up to 10 hours per week on campus. So I actually got a job in a totally different department doing translations. And that was really great because I met a whole new group of people and they had different perspectives on the university, on like my discipline, because that was a social science department and my department was humanities. And it meant that I had a new group of people to bounce ideas off and something else alongside classes. So like I was also working and that sort of gave me more purpose every day. So they're two things that I really valued when I first got here. Uh, so for me, uh, first I could say, I could say that uh, uh, the international centers webinars and pre-arrival orientation helped me very well and actually I attended all of them I tried to attend all of them but I can say almost all of them and another thing is that I was so lucky that I had a friend uh, from my country in Ann Arbor so he came to the airport picked me up and helped me with my basic needs such, such as bank accounts, buying SIM card, the housing, and getting a Michigan ID and driver's license. And uh, now that my friend did this for me, I think that I'm also so willing to do the same for other international students because I know that it can be really overwhelming when you arrive here, especially because the airport is pretty far and you need a drive for sure. So. I would be willing to do that if you're in touch with me and I have time, I would love to, I would love to help with that. I think for me, like something that was, that I did best was like, I was not afraid to ask for help because I know it's very important. Like we would need help from others. So I was always like, I used to go up to people like whom I know like very, not very well, but still I would have gone to them and I asked for help and I always got help from people to whomever I asked. And the second thing is like, it is very important. I mean, it's very true that everybody in grad school will experience, at least few will experience imposter syndrome, especially like if you, it makes you feel like, oh, you're not doing great. You're not fit enough. So you're not doing up to the mark. I think I did go to the therapy sessions, couple of them, and that did really help me. And now I'm out of it. So now, like nothing makes me feel that because now I feel like I'm best. I'm doing good. I'm just putting my 100% effort. So I think that helped me a lot. And then the other thing that I did is like, so how much ever difficult it was, I never gave up. I always put myself front and I was like, yes, I can do it. How much ever overwhelming it was, especially during the first year, uh, with uh, all the homesickness I did not give up I was like I can still do it and I pushed myself like a lot so that I can come till here and like, go much more further the other thing the best thing that I did is like I chose the best lab where my professor is very supportive who understands me uh, with respect to all the consequences with my 
who even understands my personal consequences. And if I'm unable to work due to some of the personal reasons, the, my professor really understands. And my professor also gives much importance for, um, also she imposes like work-life balance. That's very important. So I think like all these are the best decisions that I made because being in grad school is like, it's like a, being in like a house for like for a few years. So it's like, it's very important to choose a good place, good environment that makes you feel safe and makes you feel fit and not stressful. Yeah. Um, I think it was very uh, helpful for me to be very honest with my advisor um, about my needs, about my learning process, how I felt in different moments. Um, because it can be a lot to get used to a different place, a new language, um, a whole field that it's seen from a different perspective. Um, so I think just being very honest make be, makes people be more tolerant and like they, it's going to help them know how to help you. And then your advisor can even talk to other faculty members and be like, okay, like, please try to be, you know, like nice to this person because they're going through this situation. Um, so that's, I think, something important. Um, having a community, in my case of Latinx friends, uh, who support me and even today they still support me so much and yeah like it was everything um I think that having a, a strong Latinx community makes made a huge difference for me um they even I still have things that other Latinx friends that left already uh, gave me. Like, I have a couch, I have bed, I have a big microwave, um, all things that I got from this community. And, you know, everyone is very open to help. Um, also very important having access to mental health services uh, in case you need them. Um, just to have someone that it's kind of checking on you uh, through this journey. Um, I also recommend, um, and, and that, that my friends forced me to go out and spend time socializing, even when I was super busy and even when it was super cold. Um, so that helped me a lot. Um, and finally, just, you know, be patient with yourself in the process and enjoy as much as you can. Um, yeah, going out, I think it was great for me in that moment. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again. Okay, so that's the uh, end of the first half of our time together. And so as we transition into the Q&A portion of our session, uh, my colleague is going to place our evaluation survey in the chat. Can y'all just do me a favor and open the link now? And this is so that you'll have the tab ready and waiting for you when we're done here. Okay, so now remember that we'll move through this Q&A by keeping stack. And that, for those who missed it and weren't here at the beginning, is just going down the line of those who have flagged that they have a question in order of appearance. And so as a reminder, there's three ways to get onto the stack. You can use the raise your hand function, you can simply write stack in the chat, or you can write your question in the chat, and I'll answer it for you. Please speak slowly uh, so that the closed captioning can capture all that you have to say. And again, I want to remind us that we may not get to every question, but we will be providing the panelists' email addresses at the end of the Q&A so that you can reach them personally with any unanswered questions. Okay, so first up, we have someone who asked, do you think graduate school is very different from undergraduate? And if so, in what extent? Um, they've heard that They've heard y'all talk about academics and this person's a little bit nervous um, if the coursework is going to be extremely hard. Um, I think I can... that's a difficult question um, because it depends, if you come from a country where your undergraduate program is six years long and you had to grad a thesis and you had to do research and work in a lab or do field work, in my case, it was like that. So I don't think it's super different from my undergraduate uh, moment. Um, 
but it's because they had to do all those things. I know that in other universities, in other regions of the world, the system is not like that. So yes, for some of you, I bet it's going to be super different, but for others, it might not be that different. It's just, it sounds scary, but at the end of the day, you have to read papers and write projects and, you know, go to class. So I bet most of you are already familiar with all of that. And you, you're already in the University of Michigan. So you're absolutely capable to, you know, just um, figure out grad school and, and be just fine. Yeah, I can add a few more points. So yeah, I think the only difficult part would be like just managing together everything. I mean, like if you're not used to, like as uh, Paloma mentioned, like uh, if you're not used to a system where you are taking coursework and you're also reading papers and also if you're going to the lab, if you have like a lot of presentation, I wouldn't say it's like a lot and don't be nervous. I mean, everybody are doing this. This is what we are here for. So just don't be nervous, take it easy. I think um, we all got this and it's just that like, it'll be a little bit um, doing like, like you can think of like micromanaging everything and multitasking. So, because sometimes you might have like uh, quizzes uh, from your coursework and at the same time, sometime you might have to read some papers to present in the journal club in your lab or something. So it's just that, it, it depends on how you manage everything. But otherwise, it's just the part of the process. There's nothing to be nervous and the coursework wouldn't be extremely hard. Um, you're all, you've, you've all done undergrad and you're all from undergrad. And then like, I think um, it, 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 it is just the same. It's just the same. It's just that you'll just do some coursework as, as well as you'll just um, be in the lab in case if you wanted to rotate in the lab or something like that. Otherwise, I think it's pretty fine. Thank you. Do y'all have any advice for introverts? Yeah, I can go. I think like um, the only advice is like talk more, meet more people. You, the more you talk, only then you get a lot from them. And that's when you can like try to get, try to open up a bit, try. If you're a person who is very happy at like just doing whatever you want to do, don't want to meet anyone. I just want to come to lab. I just want to go to class and then I just want to go home. So if you are just a person who is very comfortable with just doing this, I would say, okay, if that's what, if you want to do. Otherwise, I would say University of Michigan has got a lot of like student run organizations and there are a lot of organizations and you'll keep hearing a lot of, uh, you'll keep getting a lot of newsletters. Try signing up for all of the newsletters, at least in your first year, just to explore uh, around what's happening and uh, I think every now and then like um, I think the festival will happen just go there go visit because you'll have a lot of time also where you can attend a lot of events and if you are in a cohort try like getting along with your cohort and try like uh, organizing like happy hours every week or every weekend try to do something with your uh, cohort every weekend so that's when like you'll meet people and you'll know what's happening around You'll definitely have like localites or the people who are from Michigan or Ann Arbor who have been here uh, earlier. So you'll get to know a lot. So just try to talk as much as possible. Try to meet a lot of people. Try to make more connections as possible. That has always helped me. Yeah. Um, I would like to say that you don't need to have 15 friends. You can just choose one person in, or two close friends. And I think it's important to consciously invest time and energy in constructing uh, close relationships. Um, like friendships are not going to happen by accident. You have to be there. You have to talk to this person. You have to um, spend time with them. So yes, you're gonna be busy, you're gonna be distracted with a hundred different things, but it is very important to just make time 
in space for your social life. And yeah, you don't have to be like going to parties every weekend. You can just focus on a few people um, that maybe even are just as introverted as you are. Um, so that's definitely um, make you feel more comfortable, I think. Thank you. So someone asked, can you join Bryn, Graduate Rackham International University? And the answer is yes. Um, you can just send them an email asking to be a member. And Vanelli from Bryn is um, putting that email in the chat right now. Okay, so y'all, how do you find an on-campus job during the first semester? Um, you can look on the university has a site, a job site where they list them all, but I would also recommend paying attention to um the emails you get, particularly from the graduate coordinator in your department, because they usually receive information from other departments that's like particularly relevant to the skills you might have or the subject you're studying. So it's like a more focused way to look. So yeah. I personally use the website for a um, student employment office and it was really helpful for me. You can log in with your unique name and then you can filter the jobs that you're looking for. For example, library jobs, non-work study or work study or even virtual jobs. And then you can look at the description and the requirements and um, all the the materials that you need to, to uh, submit for your application. And um, they get back to you, uh, even if they don't want you. And uh, I think it will be really helpful and you can improve your cover letter, your resume, and you will get some interviews for sure. And that could be really fun. And uh, so for me, I use that website and it was really helpful for me. Is there any situation that you'll avoid or prevent yourself from getting trapped in? Don't make important decisions <laughs> without thinking about them first. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, you don't have to choose one project and stick with it, even if you don't like it or you change your mind, you can change it. Um, and the same goes for your advisor. You can change your advisor. Just don't, um, just always ask for more time to make decisions if you feel like you need to. And yeah, maybe your advisor is, seems great for your original project, but if you change it, maybe you wanna work with other people in other departments. Um, so yes, be, be super open about things changing. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. I would just add that being clear about any requirements, so whether that's academic requirements or visa requirements, like always making sure that you're doing the things to graduate with the timeline that you want. And like before you take any job or do any opportunity in the US, it's really important to check with the International Center that you know you're allowed to do it. And they're the only people on campus that can answer that question. So yeah, I would just say avoid getting into situations that are avoidable by asking the people who know what the requirements are. Hey y'all, so for any, for the international students who don't have experiences studying abroad, how do you recommend smoothly adapting to a brand new environment? Language and teaching style, advice um, so what I did actually is that uh, about uh, everything about academics and classes I talked to all of my professors so at the beginning of the semester when I was sure about my courses uh, I sent an email to all of my professors asked them if I can meet them and I went to their office, talked to them, introduced myself and talked about uh, what the things that I was worried about. And it was really helpful for me to be able to sometimes receive even additional re resources and also some just, you know, good advice from the professors because they definitely have 
a lot of experiences with international students. And the other thing is that I try to just uh, join a lot of groups, different groups on campus. And especially when I had some questions about daily life, I talked to some American students, but sometimes they may not have some information because the environment is not new for them. But uh, you can also talk to international students. But I think that a combination of those two com two different types of communications can be the best option. And you can learn a lot from them. And I think some part of, uh, I guess, you know, getting into the, getting uh, familiar with the new environment is just, it happens. And you don't have to be worried about it because it happened for me. And I know that uh, when you overthink about it, it might be difficult for you, but it happens for sure. And you're going to get through. <laughs> I have a piece of advice for uh, for the ones who are really facing difficulties. So one thing that would help is like form a group like study group, like in case if you're feeling difficulties with some of the courses. So form a study group and try reading it or studying it among the group because a lot of times you can exchange a lot of uh, things. And even if you have a language uh, difficulty, that's where you can actually uh, solve all of it and you can discuss with them. I think that will really help, especially forming the study groups. Do you recommend any tools for time management, such as apps or personal notebooks? I don't follow any app or anything. I just put everything in my calendar. Google Calendar, even like even my personal things, everything, so that like it at least keeps reminding me what I have to what I have to do now. Even like if I have to do a meal prep, I'll just put in my calendar. This is the time that I have to do my meal prep. I think it's fine. It depends on like if you're a person who who needs like a constant reminder for a lot of things, and you can use a lot of there are a lot of apps that's uh, available. So, but it depends on like how how you are it, it definitely depends on the personal style for me like I don't think I fall I follow anything it's just like I put everything on my calendar and like that keeps uh, reminding so yeah I have like a personal calendar where um, I put everything apart from my work calendar so that's that's where everything sings and it keeps reminding where and what things have to be doing at what time so probably that helps for me Or what has helped you learn time management? That's not necessarily a tool that we can download. Hey, we're still working on time management. Get that. That is okay. Grad school is the place to learn. <laughs> um, so y'all recommended going to affinity spaces. Where can our audience members find these instances or organizations or more information on them? I know that the Rackham website has a list of various affinity spaces that are open to graduate students, but also because the university is so big and decentralized, I often find that if I Google like University of Michigan international students, it will bring up a lot of pages and just going through the first few results, you often find like you would find Gren, you would find the 
national center right so yeah it's usually googleable and sometimes depending on like the kind of spaces your advisor's in they might know about affinity spaces for students you can ask people in rackham you can ask the dean of students office there's a lot of spaces where they can give information about what's available to students um you should i think i would recommend you all like attending the orientation because um, as soon as you enter uh, in the august and once you finish your orientation, this i think this orientation happens in rackham try attending that if you can and once you finish that you come out you see a lot of organizations that are like they put up their uh, stalls that's where you can find like that's the first place where you can go find different organization like there are like Grin, SAR, and then RSG, Rackham Student Government Organization. A lot of stalls that will be there outside, like when you attend the uh, Rackham orientation. And yeah, so that's where you can get a lot of information and then try to sign up to them. If you're interested, try like, I won't recommend you to like go join all the organizations. It depends on like what you're interested and what is that you want to learn through your grad school. So most of these organizations has different teams like a DEI team and um, diversity, equity and inclusion team. And then uh, they have like professional development team. They have outreach teams. So how do you want to improve or yourself? Like how do you want to like, uh, what do you want to achieve by joining those organizations? Is what is what is more important for you to think about before you join any of the organizations. So. Yeah, first place is just try uh, attending all these um, orientations that happens in the beginning of your um, uh, semester. That's where you can get more information. That's where I saw a grin for the first time. Yeah. Another plug for Grin as well. I have a question. Navyashmi, you mentioned imposter syndrome. And I know that all of us here have, as graduate students, have gone through that experience at some point. Can each of you speak to what that journey was like of realizing that it exists, <laughs> how what it feels like, and how, if in any way, you've been able to release that pressure off of yourself. Yeah, I think like it, 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 it makes you feel like um, it puts you down, especially like um, you try to do a lot of things, but at the same time, you're doing a lot of things. And then the other um, brain, other side of your brain keeps telling that, ah, I think you're not up to the mark. You're not doing great. You still have to do well. How much ever you do well, it's always like you yourself put down, you keep, you have this feeling like, oh, I'm not doing well. I don't think I'm fit for this position. I don't think I'm doing justice. And uh, I, and also you try comparing to others. You see like, oh, see, they're doing great. I'm not doing great. Uh, so I feel like, um, so I think all those things will try to put you down, will try to keep pulling you back. And uh, so it makes you feel really 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 low it makes you feel especially like um, when when the time comes where you have to prepare for the candidacy exams and that's when like oh I have a lot of things to do but I don't think I'm able to answer all of these I think I'm not fit for this that's when like I think when you go to the the CAPS CAPS has like uh, many um, um, services and you can just take a like um, a appointment there and then like they give you a lot of like, it's basically like you talk to them, you talk to them what you're going through and then they kind of like advise you and then they give you like some of the exercises where you kind of like tick them, you kind of write that and then you kind of, it kind of makes you feel like it kind of puts everything that's there inside you out and feels like a lot of positivity within you. And then that's how like you, it makes you feel like, oh no, you are great, whatever it is you are unique, you are great, you are like one piece where you're doing everything. Don't always compare to others. Everybody are unique in their own way. So I think that's what is like the outcome of it. It, it, it actually helped because that's something like it keeps happening. And apart from that, in my department, 
so uh, they keep organizing like we call like from the department um, we called once the people from the rackham just to like i don't know which department in the rackham so they came and they took like one hour class they gave us multiple exercises and uh, like list of uh, questions and to write and they made us we were divided into small group and to discuss how to come out of it so basically the pis were not uh, allowed for this only the students we were allowed to speak what we are going through and how we can tackle it yeah um about imposter syndrome um I think a good strategy, and someone told me this, and I think it's very good advice, just tell yourself the things that you will tell your best friend. So just be kind to yourself. And I don't know, maybe you can talk to your family or friends from your home countries because they've seen you, They're, they've seen your journey. So talking to them is gonna remind you where you come from and how far you've come. And don't compare yourself to Americans. Like they had <laughs> access to your language, the same culture, uh, a bunch of other privileges that you don't have, but you're still here. And that's great. And you absolutely deserve to be here. And yeah, just remind yourself how far you've come. And if you need to write it down on a wall or in your mirror, do it because you have to remember that every single day. Can I add something about it? Yeah, so just, uh, I remember I was taking um, a mandatory course, uh, an ELI course for being a GSI. It was a summer course. I was not even in, in Michigan, in, in United States. And the very last test was to speak to this uh, very nice lady. It is a professor in ELI and it was the last test. So you pass or fail. And I get there and I say, and she asked me, what's your main concern? And I say, oh, uh, my main concern is my English. My accent is very Italian. And, and she said, okay, you know what? Please never lose your accent. Don't try to imitate other American sounds. This is your particularity. As um, Naviashri said, you are unique in your own uh, particularity so don't lose your uh your own yourself that's that's the point basically and everybody will understand you <laughs> and yeah we are here in grad school to study and nobody are born with all the talent guys so we are here just to we have come here to grad school just to learn just to learn how to speak. See, by the end of the grad school, I'm pretty sure you'll all do a great job. You'll all be like, oh, I've walked through a great steps. So we are all here like to learn. We are all not like born with talent. So it's fine. It's fine. Even if you don't know, it's also, it's fine to say, I don't know. It's like one good thing is like in grad school, learn to say that I don't know. It's fine. It's fine to say, I don't know. You can like go back, look at it. You can always learn. So we are all here to learn. So it's fine. Definitely. I definitely had to learn that I don't know what has needed to be very comfortable in my vocabulary. And it made things a lot easier once, um, once I allowed for that. Any tips do you, that y'all have for surviving the freezing winter for our folks from more tropical I use the advice that I received from my friends that we should do the wear layers because when you go out, it's so cold and maybe just one layer is not enough. But when you are inside, maybe you feel like it's warm. You can take one, one layer. But sometimes at the law library, it was really cold. And I can remember that I was always wearing sweater when I was studying at the library. So you should always be prepared for every situation. And wearing layers was a good advice. And because the winds are so harsh in Ann Arbor, I guess, 
Uh, I think wearing a scarf to cover your mouth and your nose can be really helpful because uh, it will dry your skin. And also sometimes I felt that I'm crying because of the cold weather. So maybe covering your face and your head can also be helpful. I can give you that I think it's it's always good. Take time for yourself. Self-care is really important in grad school. So that's very important. It's okay. Try and work hard during the weekdays and make sure keep your keep the weekends for the self-care. Try to do self-care. That's very important in grad school. And the other thing is like, um, yeah, if you're feeling like if you're too low you're going down you're unable to do that talk to don't just be keep it within yourself um try uh, talking to people around that you're comfortable with and always try to put it out it's okay uh, everybody are we're all in the same boat we're all traveling together so it's fine and also if you if you don't have anybody if you're not comfortable speaking to anybody uh, or your fellow mates there's always uh, caps uh, I think um, the ones uh, um, that's been attached on the chat. So try going there, try to get, it's really helpful. So I think that will really help you. And apart from that, try to have like, try to make friends and then try to have a good work-life balance and just have a, a healthy lifestyle. <laughs> that's it. That's my biggest advice based on my experience. Hey, thank you. That is all the time that we have for today. I know, I feel like time flew by. I want to thank everyone in the audience for their presence and their participation and our panelists for giving their time and their expertise to us today. I have one last question. Before we go, I'd love to hear the biggest piece of advice that you, our panelists, would like to share with our audience members as they start their new journey. Um, I would say, like, don't, like make the most of every moment and don't keep saying like sometimes it's not possible but don't keep saying that like for example you'll travel more or like you'll join stuff because you know the time goes really fast so just doing as much as you can as soon as you can because you don't know when big things will change like globally nationally for you personally so yeah I could I can say that uh, enjoy and develop all aspects of your life while you are in Ann Arbor and do not exclusively focus on your studies and try to take advantages advantage of all the opportunities provided to you as much as possible. So, for example, all the time, please check your emails. You can find a lot of great things sending from all departments of the university to you. And you can find something, a lot of things actually that you like and you can be interested in. And it can be, a, have, they can have a great value for your life and experiences and resume and maybe in your future professions. Yeah, I can give like a few other tips. Like uh, try to, if you're joining a PhD program, try to choose a PI who's very supportive because that's the home for you for next five years and also like Rackham has a lot of uh, scholarships try exploring them and then they keep organizing a lot of events try exploring them keep eye open for all of those and as you're here enjoy the journey just enjoy the journey just don't stress yourself out yeah um I think my advice will be similar just take care of yourself mentally and physically is absolutely a priority um, everything else can be adjusted so maybe you feel that grad school it has to be everything super strict well I've submitted so many applications and grants the day after the deadline um, so there is some flexibility there um, yeah, most deadlines are flexible. People will understand your situation if you communicate. Um, and it's impressive how many resources are available for Michigan students to support you. Um, we all have the same problems. So probably there is 
already someone thinking, how can we make this better? Um, and then make sure you you adjust your academic goals to who you are and where you come from and the tools that you have. Um, you don't have to be like everyone else. Um, don't compare yourself to others. And yeah, just you're in a graduate program at the University of Michigan. That's incredible already. So yeah, just celebrate that, that you're here and in, spend, enjoy your time here. Wonderful. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. So the recording of this event will be sent to you once it has been processed. And remember to take um, a brief second to take the survey when you have a chance. And our panelists' um, email addresses will be provided for you in the chat shortly. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, take care of yourselves. Have a beautiful weekend.